Hello folks, welcome back to Water Child Tarot. My name is Sarah. Today I have a um, walkthrough of a deck. I've done a walkthrough of this before, um, but I wanted to do a comparison because there's a new edition out. So this is the Star Seeker Tarot by Nikki Ferrata. And um, this edition, the full size edition, came out in 2020, I believe. Um, and then this little pocket version um, has just been released. It's November of 2021. And there's been some significant changes um, in the production um, and some of the features of the deck. And so I just wanted to kind of go over those in case anybody um, out there was looking at maybe, you know, either you had held off because there were certain features of this that you didn't like, or you weren't sure if you would like a pocket version. Maybe you liked the original and you weren't sure if you wanted a little... Um, a smaller one for traveling. I just thought I could go over those. Um, so very quickly, um, this is the box for the full size. It has more of a, a kind of a fabric-y feel almost. It's not fabric, but maybe a light rose petal finish. Um, and it's a pressure uh, closure here. So this lid kind of fits tightly, um, but it is hinged. So it's easy to get open and closed. Comes with a booklet you can see there. And then the pocket size version is like this, and this has the wraparound magnetic kind of closure. Um, so it opens like that. This is my favorite style of box of all time. I really like these, and I wish they would become the standard across the tarot industry. To me, it's worth the extra dollar, dollar fifty in production costs to, to get this because it doesn't fall open, and you don't have two pieces of box when you go to, you know, take your cards out. You don't have a lid and a bottom. You just have one thing. So I really like that. Um, the travel size does also come with the same guidebook. And this one has just text only. But you can see there's a full page for every card. So it's nice that she still managed to get a guidebook into this little box. Um, we'll talk about... Um, the differences in production quality. Uh, first, I wanted to just point out that I did do a manicure for you guys, and I think it, I don't know if it turned out very well, but I was busy looking at um, a bunch of uh, top-down videos, including on some other topics, and I just, everybody does their nails so nicely. Even uh, some of you fellows in this community um, will wear nail polish, and it looks so good on camera, and so I, I thought I'd give it a shot, but I don't know. It's been years since I've given myself a manicure, and I don't think this color suits me, so let me know in the comments below. Would you prefer my standard, like, farmer gardener hands um, with torn cuticles and dirt under my fingernails, or do you want, like, a sloppy manicure job? <laughs> Is one better than the other? Okay, anyway. So on the left, of course, we have the original full-size version. This is a standard tarot size. And the mini, um, which is, I haven't measured this, but it's it's slightly, so it's in proportion um, to this tarot size. So it's slightly, uh, if you get like a tarot in a tin from US Games, it's slightly bigger than that, but not by much. So there you can see the difference. Um, the backs are the same, but you'll see that the coloration is slightly different. So you see more of that aurora um, on the back, whereas here it's a little bit more subtle with that night sky feature. And then um, here on the left, you can see on the full size cards, you have a matte finish. Here on the pocket size, you actually have like a semi gloss. So they're not super shiny, but they do reflect the light a little bit more, whereas these do not at all. They're just completely matte. And these also have that very heavy rose petal kind of finish, um, sort of rubbery finish, uh, which I have come to not like at all. Um, so the reason that I got the little, the little version is that the cardstock is different and it doesn't have that rose petal finish on it. And I just wanted to try it out. Um, I'll be fully honest with you, as much as I gushed about the artwork in this deck in my longer, um, earlier review that I made, and I'll link that video below, um, I do still love the artwork, but I have not been using this deck at all because the rose petal finish makes it unpleasant for me to shuffle. I can shuffle it, um, but it's just not nice to work with. It's not tactile, uh, tactically nice. Um, I do a lot of live uh, readings for people um, on 
video and I feel very clumsy when I'm trying to shuffle the cards in front of them and I don't make you know reading videos where I could edit that part out um, so I either have to shuffle off screen or just be really clumsy with it and so I don't like it um, so I haven't been using it and it's been unfortunate because I really feel like Nikki Ferrata put a lot of thought into her selections of the imagery that she uses um, I like the art style in general but this deck is also very representative um, and it's got so much going for it in the artwork, it's been a real shame not to use it. So that's why I kind of wanted to put this out, um, both to, to share my thoughts on that, but also to just kind of experience this uh, side by side. I haven't actually sat down and looked at these side by side myself, so this is a good experience for me. All right, so um, the last thing I'll point out before we get to look at the cards is the edging. So on the original, you have this matte um per, like dusty purple color which matches the artwork the the artwork in this deck um is varied in the palette but uh, this kind of purple color uh comes through a lot of the cards and then on the pocket size we have this kind of holographic silvered edging like this um and i have decided i really don't like um metallic edgings on cards um, i think they wear poorly um, and they can be quite sharp, and this is a little bit sharp. Um, it's not as sharp as some thicker full-size decks that I have with the metallic edging on them, but it's, it's, not, um, it's not my ideal. It's not what I would want. I would want the same edging as this deck onto this one, or just a plain cut edge. I really don't mind a plain cut edge on decks. I don't think it looks bad. Um, and it's only when you take the cards out of the box for the first time that you really even see the edging. So I don't understand the point of making something that um, is more expensive, um, that can, can wear poorly, and that can kind of hurt your hands to shuffle. Like I said, this isn't as bad as some of the full-size decks with the thicker cards. Okay, so those are the differences in kind of cardstock stuff. Um, the one other difference, and I wasn't expecting this but i just noticed it on this card is that you have a different placement for some of the titles so on the original um, on this full card you have the title down here at the bottom and then on the pocket size you have it up here and i can see why she may have done that this could have maybe gotten lost down here um, we'll go through and look but i think she moves the title up and down on the cards and that's another pet peeve of mine I really prefer that you place the titles all in one place um, unless it's somehow related to the artwork and you can like work it into the background or something I don't mind that but if you're just going to have them at the top or the bottom pick top or bottom and put them all there so I know where to look um, what I do like is that the titles are discreet they're um, they're just in a thin font and so they don't jump out at you so they're there if you need them, but they don't really distract too much from the artwork. Okay, so let's just go through and look at these. What I'm noticing um, here, and I don't know how much it's gonna show up on camera, um, is that the pocket size, because it has that semi-gloss, it's throwing more light back into your eye. And so um, you're actually getting like more of the saturation of the color. And you can see the image a little bit clearer, or at least I can. Whereas the the super matte finish over here is kind of sucking all the light. And so sometimes it's a little hard to tell what's going on or there's not as much contrast with the details. Um, let's see how slippery these are. Um, so that's one thing. The, the colors just look a little more saturated over here. So what concerned me was that you wouldn't be able to pick out a lot of detail. For example, on this chariot card, you have like moon phases back here. And, you know, in the smaller size, I don't know um, whether that makes a big difference to your eye. But um, maybe with, the, with this throwing more light back, you actually can pick up on those kind of translucent details. Okay, so and we just had a calamity. I'm also working on a slight incline today. I've been fiddling around with my card setup because I noticed in the last couple of videos 
there's been some glare that I haven't picked up on during filming, but then I notice it during editing. So I'm trying to figure out how to get rid of that glare and still have the cards like stay in a pile. I do like that she kept this thin margin on both decks. I like decks with um, a very thin border or margin on them. I just think it helps the, it helps protect the edges of the artwork, first of all, and it also just kind of helps set each card off as its own thing. So it's, it's almost borderless, but not quite. The backs are borderless though, so that's good. I don't like uh, borders on the backs of the cards. This moon, the moon and sun in this deck are some of my favorite um, celestial cards that I've seen in tarot. They're just so evocative. This to me is exactly what the landscape looks like in moonlight, and she's captured that so well. Um, and also just the fact that you get a big old sun and a big old moon. Um, I've looked at some other decks lately that I've been considering purchasing, and they don't have celestial bodies in these star, moon, and sun cards, and it kind of drives me a little nuts. Like. The moon is the moon, show me the moon. This is her extra card. She numbers it number 22 and it's called the womb. And I do like it. Um, I leave it in because to me it has a different um, connotation than any other card in the, in the deck. But um, obviously you could choose to use it or not. So you kind of get the idea. I'm going to zip through these and just see if I notice any more of those title changes. And we'll see here in a few cards coming up, but some of these characters that have darker skin tones, um, it can be hard to see their features in this matte, um, cardstock and it seems like it's slightly improved over here um but i don't know you should be the judge like this is pretty close but and and part of it's the artwork style too she's using almost it almost looks like um paper piecing so each um plane is a solid color there's not a lot of shading which doesn't work as well for depicting people with darker skin tones. It's hard to see their features. So if I were, you know, really going to art critique this, I think that would be my one of my main takeaways. But I think in general, it is a little easier to see the detail over here on the pocket size. And I guess what I just said about like details and stuff is true even for these light skinned um, characters because all you really get here for example is like a jawline you don't really see a ton of detail in the facial expression it looks vaguely um, you know she's looking up so it looks vaguely joyful but that's more in the body language than it really is in the face if you if you kind of stop and, and examine it so I get more variation in the sky on this one, on this pocket one, than I do over here. This looks a little bit more monotone. This one I see a little bit um, more variation. And I rambled on and on about this in my other video, um, so I won't go into it here, but I just love the, that she's changed up some of the um, kind of stock card images from the RWS, like this Nine of Cups. 
um, and just made the, made some of the cards that fall flat in that deck and that are kind of boring, frankly. Um, she's, you know, she's done something creative with them. So here we go with the titles. This title here, Ten of Cups, is at the top, and this one's at the bottom. I like this placement better. in the suit of swords there's so many cards that are just can be kind of problematic if they're interpreted in a very narrow way but like this three of swords for example um you know you still got tears but it's not a bleeding heart or a stabbed heart i love this four of swords this is my favorite four of swords of any deck i've seen ever I guess another way I could say that is the mini um, or the pocket edition just looks a little more crisp. It's not as fuzzy. She also uses a lot of figures that are hovering or levitating. I even find it, it's hard to shuffle this one, but I even find it difficult to just pick up one card. Like I can't tell if I've got one or two. Sometimes I think I've got one and I have two. Slide everywhere, aren't you? A title change here. Looks like this has gotten cropped. I was wondering if she had to crop some of these in. So. I do prefer titles at the bottom of cards, so that's fine. Move them all down. Let's take one. Here's an example where this face is actually harder to read than this one. So I guess it's not universally true one way or another um, as to which, which version works better. So that is the Star Seeker Tarot by Nikki Ferrada, the comparison between the original and matte um, cardstock. 
full size and the new version, the pocket edition with the semi-gloss cardstock. Um, let's do a quick comparison on thickness. So yep, on the left here, you can see this is 350 GSM paper. On the right is 300. So you can see this one's quite a bit thinner, which is good because if it were too thick, it would be impossible to shuffle in this smaller size. Um, the smaller the cards, the thinner the cardstock needs to be in order just to remain flexible. So let's try this out. So it's difficult to bend, and I've practiced with this deck too. It's difficult to bend, and you can see I'm still getting some clumping here. They go together okay, but then this part is just really like, come on, get in there. that you can't just like shoot and put them together you have to go and then over here very zappy you can see how much faster those um go together I would, I would want them even thinner than that, actually, because, yeah, trying to bend a, a smaller, you don't have as much um, length here to, to get your arch. So anyway, there they are. Um, I'm definitely going to be using the pocket. I'm going to try to make myself break it out for readings, either for myself or like introduce it to clients and friends and see if they want to get readings. Um, but I think ultimately my takeaway or my suggestion uh, Nikki, if you're watching, is to put out this deck in this cardstock, keep it this thin or even slightly thinner is okay. You know, what's wrong with a 280 or a 250? Um, take this scratchy gilding off. And, you know, I think that would be amazing. I think that would yield a deck that I would use probably as my go-to. Um, what do you all think? Do you have this deck? Have you been holding off because you've heard about the rose petal finish or you know that you're not a fan? Are you going to consider it now that it's um, in this other format? Um, what do you think of the size differences? What do you think of the coloration differences? Well, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. And until next time, from my minky fingernail nail polish to your beautiful selves, have a great day.